and welcome to my channel. Today I will discuss five errors that are commonly encountered when executing queries in SQL Server. I will discuss an invalid object error, an invalid column error, an aggregate function error, a primary key error, and then we'll finish off with a qualification error. For our first query, we're going to create a query that creates the invalid object error and then we're going to fix it. So in this query we're going to select the first name, the last name, and the postal code of all the customers who have a postal code of 98911. So we click execute and here you see it says invalid object name customer. So here the way to fix this is that we have a misspelling in the from clause because we're querying the customer table but it says customer. So if we put an O there and fix the misspelling we click execute and our query runs. Now another reason you can get this error is if you're querying the wrong database. We're going to change the database. We click execute and as you can see it says invalid object name again. So two ways to fix that is to check for a misspelling or make sure that you're querying the correct database. So now we change it back, we click execute and our query runs. For our next query we're going to create an invalid column error. So in this query we're going to select the customer ID, the first name, the last name, the home phone, and the state from the customer table where the state is equal to FL which represents Florida. So we click execute and as you can see it says invalid column name FL. So in this case the reason we're getting this is because we're querying a column that has a uh, text data type and that text data type is a character data type for the state column. Whenever you query a column that has a text data type you must use single quotes around the, around the value. So we're going to put a single quote around FL then we click execute and the query runs fine. In this query we're going to create an aggregate function error. So in this query we're going to select the customer's customer ID, the first name, the last name, and then we're going to use an aggregate function called the min function. And the min function finds the lowest value in a column. So we're going to use min to find the first date of purchase. So we use the as keyword to display the date of first purchase. And we're going to be querying the customers and the sales table. We're going to click execute and you're going to see an aggregate function error so we click execute and it says the customer's customer ID is invalid in the select list because it is not contained in either an aggregate function or a group by clause. Now the reason this is happening is because whenever you use an aggregate function in your query which is this min function and you want to display the results per another column or columns you must use the group by clause. So we're using an aggregate function here and we want to display the results per the customer's customer ID column, the first name column, and the last name column. So in order to do that we have to include a group by clause containing those column names. So the customer's customer ID is in the select right after the select keyword. It also must be contained after the group by keyword. So customer's customer ID, here we have first name, first name, last name, last name. So all these columns have to be included in a group by clause in order for this query to run. And they're preceding an aggregate function, and in this case the min function. So now when we click execute, the query should run now that we have a group by clause containing the columns that precede the aggregate function. So we click execute and now you can see we have the customer ID of the customers, the first name, their last names, and the date of their first purchase. For our next query we're going to create a primary key error. Now keep in mind primary key columns contain non-repeating data meaning that only all the values have to be unique values, no repeating values within the primary key column. So we're going to do an insert statement where we insert values into these columns. Customer ID, first name, last name, address, state, 
city and postal code and then here's our values keyword and here are the values that we're going to insert so we're going to insert a 14 for the customer ID Jennifer for first name Lewis for last name 1823 3rd Avenue North for the address NL you know NM for New Mexico for the state Las Cruces for the city and 88995 for the postal code we click execute and then we get this error it says violation of primary key constraint cannot inser insert duplicates keys in the object of the customer table so to fix that the reason why it won't go in is because there's already a 14 for the customer ID because the customer ID column is the primary key column and as we said earlier primary key columns cannot have repeating data only unique values so we'll change this to 15 then click execute and the query should insert the um, record into the table so we click execute and it says one row affected and it completed successfully so for our last query we're going to create a qualification error so this query we're going to select the customer ID the first name the last name and the order date from the customer and orders table for each customer so we're going to click execute and as you can see it says ambiguous column name customer ID so this is a qualification error and the reason we're getting this is because the customer ID resides in both the customer table and the orders table and so SQL Server doesn't know which customer ID you're trying to to retrieve it's confused because that customer ID is in both tables in the customer table the customer ID is the primary key and in the orders table the customer ID is the foreign key so we have to qualify this column telling SQL Server which column and table we're referring to so instead we type customer dot customer ID which says we want the customer ID from the customer table so we want the customer ID from the customer table we want the first name the last name and the order date column so we click execute and as you can see we have the customer ID the first name the last name and the order dates for these customers I hope that you enjoyed today's video on five errors that are commonly encountered in SQL Server. Please like and subscribe and if you'd like more in-depth learning, check out my SQL course in the description section below.